This might look like just another energy breakthrough, but it's far more significant. In a world constantly on the lookout for the next big thing in energy, supercritical CO2 turbines are quietly changing the game. Forget steam turbines and their limitations. What if I told you that carbon dioxide, usually seen as a harmful byproduct, could be the secret ingredient to revolutionize power plants? Today we dive into the technology that promises to be the future of energy, pushing efficiency to new heights. Let's explore the potential of supercritical CO2 turbines. The basics of supercritical CO2. To understand why supercritical CO2 is a game changer, we first need to grasp what supercritical means. Imagine a substance that can behave like both a gas and a liquid. Supercritical CO2 is just that. When CO2 is heated beyond 31 degrees C, 88 degrees Fe, and placed under high pressure, about 74 atmospheres, it enters a state where its properties combine those of gases and liquids. It becomes dense like a liquid but can flow freely like a gas, making it ideal for energy systems. This unusual state of matter allows supercritical CO2 to efficiently transfer energy, which is key in powering turbines. Unlike steam, which must go through phase changes that waste energy, supercritical CO2 remains stable in its high-density form, enabling more efficient energy conversion. This unique characteristic makes it an attractive alternative to traditional steam in power plants, offering the potential for smaller, more efficient turbines with greater energy output. It's this blend of liquid density and gas-like flow that gives supercritical CO2 its power in the energy sector. CO2 in action, the pressure chamber experiment. To see supercritical CO2 in action, let's turn to a fascinating demonstration. Dr. James Orgel from the Action Lab YouTube channel offers a clear visual of how CO2 transitions from solid to supercritical fluid. In a high-pressure chamber, solid CO2, or dry ice, is subjected to increasing pressure and temperature. As the conditions change, the CO2 first becomes a liquid and, with more heat, crosses the threshold to become supercritical. At this point, CO2 behaves like both a gas and a liquid, dense enough to store energy, yet able to flow freely through systems. A piece of styrofoam placed inside the chamber floats around as the CO2 reaches its supercritical state, showing how this dense fluid expands to fill the entire space. This transformation from solid CO2 to a supercritical fluid illustrates the powerful potential of CO2 in turbines. It's this high-density fluid that can drive turbines with far greater efficiency compared to traditional steam, making it an attractive alternative for power generation. How CO2 Powers Turbines now that we understand what supercritical CO2 is, let's explore how it works inside a turbine. The process is quite similar to the traditional steam turbines, but with notable improvements. In a supercritical CO2 system, the CO2 is first compressed and heated. This causes the CO2 to expand rapidly, forcing it through a series of turbine blades. As the CO2 passes through, it spins the blades, which in turn power a generator to produce electricity. The key difference here is that supercritical CO2 is much denser than steam, which means turbines can be significantly smaller and more compact. A supercritical CO2 turbine can be up to 10 times smaller than a comparable steam turbine, making it ideal for applications where space is limited. The high density also allows these turbines to generate more power for their size, increasing overall efficiency. Additionally, because the CO2 stays in its supercritical state, it avoids the erosion caused by water droplets in steam turbines, which leads to longer turbine lifespans and less maintenance. This results in more reliable and durable systems. Efficiency gains and why they matter. Supercritical CO2 turbines offer a major boost in efficiency compared to traditional steam turbines. One of the biggest advantages is their ability to operate at higher temperatures, which leads to a greater temperature difference between the turbine's inlet and outlet. This larger temperature drop allows for more energy to be extracted from the CO2, which directly translates to better overall efficiency. While modern steam turbines are typically around 40% efficient, 
supercritical CO2 turbines can reach up to 50% efficiency. This increase is critical for improving the performance of power plants and reducing the amount of fuel needed to generate the same amount of electricity. Additionally, supercritical CO2 doesn't experience the phase change from liquid to gas that steam does, which leads to less energy loss. Without the need for boiling or condensing water, energy is conserved more effectively. This efficiency improvement is crucial for the long-term sustainability of power generation, reducing emissions and helping meet global energy demands while minimizing environmental impact. Now first, like always, be sure to hit the like button down below. It helps us out tremendously with the reach of this video. Thank you. Overcoming Material Durability Challenges Despite the promising efficiency gains, supercritical CO2 turbines do face significant challenges, particularly when it comes to material durability. The extreme temperatures and pressures required for supercritical CO2 systems put a great deal of stress on the components of the turbine. Traditional materials, which are used in steam turbines, often struggle to withstand the intense conditions inside a supercritical CO2 system. The high-density CO2 can accelerate wear on seals, bearings, and blades, leading to potential failures if not properly engineered. To address this, researchers are focusing on developing advanced alloys and coatings that can handle the extreme conditions without degrading over time. These materials must be able to endure temperatures exceeding 500 degrees 932 degrees while maintaining their strength and flexibility. The high-speed flow of supercritical CO2 also requires precision engineering to ensure that every component can handle the pressure without leaking or breaking down. Overcoming these material challenges will be essential to making supercritical CO2 turbines a viable option for large-scale deployment in power plants. Real-world applications and current projects the potential of supercritical CO2 turbines is not just theoretical, real-world applications are already in progress. One of the most notable projects is the STEP demo, Supercritical Transformational Electric Power, pilot plant in Texas, which aims to demonstrate the commercial viability of this technology. This $155 million project, a collaboration between General Electric, Southwest Research Institute, and the U.S. Department of Energy, reached a significant milestone in 2023 with mechanical completion. By May 2024, the plant successfully produced electricity, generating four mead dollars of grid-synchronized power. The turbine reached speeds of 27,000 RPM at an operating temperature of 500 degrees and 250 bar. This project highlights the practical possibilities of supercritical CO2 systems, showing that they can work in real-world environments. Looking ahead, the plant's next phase, set for 2025, will involve increasing the turbine's temperature to 715 degrees Celsius, further improving efficiency. With such developments, this technology is proving its potential for diverse applications, including waste heat recovery, solar thermal, nuclear power, and even carbon capture systems, paving the way for a cleaner, more efficient energy future. The Road Ahead While supercritical CO2 turbines hold immense promise, scaling up the technology and reducing costs remain major hurdles. These systems are currently expensive to develop and implement due to the need for advanced materials and the complex engineering required to handle supercritical CO2's extreme conditions. The goal is to bring down the cost by improving manufacturing processes and increasing the efficiency of the turbines. As the technology matures, economies of scale will help lower production costs. Additionally, optimizing the turbines for use in various energy sectors, including nuclear, solar, and waste heat recovery, will help to justify the investment. Although the initial costs are high, the long-term savings from increased efficiency and reduced maintenance will likely make supercritical CO2 turbines a more cost-effective solution in the future. Research efforts are focusing on improving system durability, developing cheaper materials, and increasing the turbine's adaptability to different energy sources, which will be crucial to making this technology viable on a global scale. The Future of Energy Generation Supercritical CO2 turbines 
represent a leap forward in the way we generate electricity. Their higher efficiency, smaller size, and lower environmental impact compared to traditional steam turbines make them an exciting alternative for power plants. As the technology advances, it is likely to become a key player in the transition to cleaner energy sources, including nuclear, solar thermal, and waste heat recovery systems. Despite the challenges, such as material durability and cost, the progress made so far, including successful pilot projects like the STEP demo, shows that supercritical CO2 turbines are moving closer to widespread implementation. If the industry continues to invest in research and development, this technology could significantly reduce global energy consumption and emissions, making it an integral part of the future energy landscape. By increasing energy efficiency and minimizing the environmental footprint, supercritical CO2 turbines may well play a pivotal role in creating a more sustainable and efficient energy system for the world. Supercritical CO2 turbines are poised to revolutionize energy generation with greater efficiency, smaller size, and reduced environmental impact. As research advances, these turbines could address critical global energy and environmental challenges. Subscribe for more insights on groundbreaking energy solutions. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.